As you know, we love our hardcore 911s here at Evo, but even by our standards, this car is pretty special. We don't often test classics, but when our friends at RM Auctions invited us to drive this 1969 911S at the Chobham test track, we couldn't resist. One of just six 911S models built by the factory with special upgrades for rallying, this particular car has a fabulous competition history, both as an international rally winner and a 24-hour endurance racer. It's also road legal, which would surely transform even the dullest trips of the shops into a special stage. Fully restored to its final 1972 racing livery and mechanical specification, it looks sensational. With fat tyres and Fuchs alloys just contained within the widened wheel arches and a race-tuned 2.5 litre flat six tucked in the tail, this car is the epitome of competition 911 cool. This particular car went on to win the 1969 Acropolis Rally which is quite something to think about when you're driving it anyway. But then just to prove the versatility of the 911, it then went on to race three times at Le Mans in 1970, 71 and 72, during which time the spec of the car evolved and developed into the spec that it is today. So having started life with a two litre engine with around 170 horsepower when it finally raced at Le Mans in 72 it had been upgraded to ST spec which is a 2.5 litre engine with around 270 horsepower so a big gain in power when you think the car weighs just about a ton ringing wet you can uh, you can hopefully get some sense of what performance it has. The engine is incredibly special. It's got flat slide throttle body, so the throttle response is instant. It's got these amazing trumpets in the engine bay, so you just stand there and look in awe at the engine for, for hours on end. It's got a five-speed gearbox with dog leg first limited slip differential but in essence it's a pretty simple simple car but was absolutely competitive in its day certainly in rallying it always struggled a little bit at Le Mans because it was underpowered compared to the opposition and this car never actually was classified at Le Mans it always suffered problems from time to time but as a car to drive and enjoy it's just a fabulous thing so it's got impeccable competition history but just like all 911s it's perfectly drivable there's no temperament to it at all it's a nice thing to drive it's supple I mean, I would love to drive this on the road. You might get tinnitus after a long journey, but it's just so small and wieldy in a way that only very early 911s are. It's the first time the car has ever really been for sale publicly after it was rallied by the factory. The factory sold it to a, to a French enthusiast who did some road rallies and then took it racing and it changed hands but within a community of French French drivers so this is the first time it's really been out there and been for sale with its history it means you could pretty much compete anywhere you could do Le Mans Classic you could do Tour Auto you could do historic rallying you could pretty much take your pick but obviously as it's one of the last kind of road, genuine road races and road rally cars, you could also use it as a road car. So as part of a collection, it's going to be one of those cars that you'd probably even just decide to go and pick up the daily papers in it or something because you just want to get in it and drive it. As a car to drive, well, it's, it's dead easy. Like all old 911s, it's very small and compact. So you kind of wear it rather than sit in it there's weight to the steering, but that diminishes with speed. So you just have a lovely 
fingertip feel. The gear shift when you do a dry run, it feels like it's going to have quite a long throw. But again, it's just a really snappy shift. And this engine is just the best thing. 911 engines when they're tuned like this always sound so angry. pretty modern in most respects you wouldn't you wouldn't feel lost in this car if you came from a modern 911 and you'd certainly feel and notice the similarities so it's yeah you can probably tell i absolutely adore this car i could drive it forever i'd kill to have it in my garage and i think it's probably safest if i steer very clear of our absorption in paris because Although I'm about a million pounds short of the budget I think you'll need to buy, I don't think I could resist scratching my nose or waving. So, yeah, my dream car, I think. If you enjoyed this, why not watch our video for an exclusive behind the scenes look at the star cars of RM's Paris auction, and don't forget to come back to Evo for live coverage of the Paris auction on Wednesday the 4th of February from 7pm Central European time. The first car that Evo have selected is an icon of the 1970s, the 1977 Lancia Stratos HF Stradale from Bertoni. Stradale, of course, stand in for street version, HF, high fidelity. The engine is shared with the Dino Ferrari, of course, V6, 2.4 litres, almost 200 brake horsepower in a very light package. One of fewer than 500 cars that were built. These cars were built specifically for the World Rally Championship. They won three consecutive World Rally Championships in the 70s and 80s. One Italian owner from New, showing less than 39,000 kilometers. This is a rare and special opportunity for the discerning collector. Our next car is the 1977 Lamborghini Countach LP400 Periscopio. The most desirable Countach, one of the 150 coveted Periscopio cars produced. Clean, minimalist, avant-garde styling from None other than uh, Marcello Gandini for Bertoni again. 375 brake horsepower from the 4-litre double overhead cam V12 engine. The car that we're offering in Paris is a rare original factory right-hand drive example with just four owners and less than 35,000 miles from new. We're expecting great things from this car in Paris. Well, it would seem that Evo magazine really quite like mid-engine supercars because the next car that they've selected for me to talk about is the 1969 Di Tommaso Mangusta, a legendary 1960s mid-engine supercar with timeless muscular Italian styling by Gigiaro for gear, reliable V8 power from Ford. The Mangusta is said to have been inspired by the legendary Ford GT40 and we can really see where that inspiration comes from. This example spent many years in the famed Rosso Bianco Museum, and as such, it's retained its original paint upholstery and drivetrain, making this a rare and special opportunity to find a Mangusta in such fine original condition. Our next car is a modern day classic, the 1989 Porsche 911 Speedster, inspired by one of the all time greats, the 356 Speedster from the 1950s. 30 years on, Porsche launched this limited edition 911 Speedster, building around 2,000 motor cars. It sports a number of styling features reminiscent of the original Speedster design, such as the low cut-down screen. It's extremely stylish, very desirable, fantastic open-air motor in. The example that we're selling in Paris is finished in a desirable and rare forest green colour. This is a US spec example that found its way to Greece and has had just two owners from new. Next up is a 1973 Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7 Sports Lightweight. One of only 200 Series 2 Sports Lightweights built with ultra light gauge aluminium combined with fiberglass and strips of unnecessary creature comforts. 2.7 litre air cooled fuel injected motor, racing bucket seats, the 2.7 litre Ren Sport Lightweight 
was built to be nothing less than purposeful. It's a true race car for the road, highly collectible in today's market. Prices have increased hugely in the last couple of years. This is a match in numbers, fully restored example to original specification, finished in this delightful original shade of light yellow, a color that was discovered when it was restored. It has a full restoration file, as well as the all important Porsche certificate of authenticity, inspected and verified by Jurgen Bart. This is a really exciting motor car. Next we have the successor to the Stratos we saw earlier, the 1982 Lancia 037 Stradale. 037 is another one of those highly sought after Stradale or road going variants of successful competition cars. With design input from both Pininfarina as well as Dallara, these were true purpose built racers. With a super rigid steel subframe, they bore no resemblance to a road car whatsoever. Two litre supercharged engine and lightweight bodywork from Kevlar reinforced with fiberglass. And the car that we're offering in Paris is a single owner from New Example, showing less than 14,000 kilometers from New. It's not been modified, it's in factory original condition, and as such, highly desirable. A very, very fine example of the 037, and rare to find with such low mileage and being just one owner from New. Next we have the 1965 Isogrifo A3C Stradale from the legendary Giotto Bitterini, the man that gave us the 250 GTO, the legendary 250 GTO. This is an early aluminium rivet body example of the front mid-engine road race car that boasts near perfect weight distribution and thunderous power, over 350 brake horsepower from Chevrolet, pulling this car to a top speed of almost 180 miles per hour. The A3C Iso Griffo was a highly competitive, competent race car, achieving class wins at Le Mans in 1964 as well as 1965. And the example we're offering in Paris was recently restored by Mark Specialist in Italy, finished in its original shade of Mela Verde, dubbed as the Green Apple. And having driven this car, they sound just amazing. Blivo have asked me to tell you a bit about this Ferrari F121A experimental engine. At RM, we, we mostly sell motor cars, we rarely sell items of memorabilia, but every now and then something very special comes our way, and this is one of those pieces. It's a 90 degree V8 engine, 2 litre twin turbocharged, develops around 400 horsepower. It's believed that only three of these experimental engines were produced. One now resides at the Ferrari uh, Museum. So, this twin turbo engine with its characteristic red cam covers, represents a rare opportunity to obtain a factory ex experimental development engine. You can have it at home as your coffee table. We very much hope to welcome you to our auction on February the 4th in Paris. Retromobile is a fabulous event, very international, very high profile, lots of variety. The season has started extremely positively with our auction in Arizona. It was our highest ever Arizona total. We're delighted with the result. We very much hope that that mood continues through our Paris auction in a couple of weeks. We hope to see you there.